Hey everybody, so we're doing a major, major unboxing video right now for the Joan of Arc Kickstarter. I just got back from Korea, so I finally got access to everything. And I say we because I am joined today by... Hi guys. This is my brother Andrew. Um, you guys, if you've followed YouTube, you saw him show up in... There was a couple of videos that you've, you've done with. Yeah, did the podcast, uh, one podcast. And yeah. Another thing. Yeah, so he's been, he's done a few things. So, we have a big giant stack here. It's also too large for you to see it all, so let's go ahead and pull off. That, yeah. yeah. All right. We have this and all of these. So we have nine things total that we're going to be unboxing today. So this may take a while. So oh, pull that out of the way. Pull this out of the way. Uh, Joan of Arc is a 15 millimeter um, miniatures war game. Which it's, admittedly is my first 15 millimeter game at all. Yeah, Even I know. Though we've been gamers since for like 97. Yeah. And that was when uh, when Armageddon, when uh, 40k uh, oh, epic, epic, yeah. yeah. But that that was that's uh, that was the six, only fifty millimeter out there. No, that, that's time. six millimeter, so that's even smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, we we haven't played any fifteen millimeter before. This is all set around the Hundred Years' War, and when I first saw it on Kickstarter, I, I thought it was kind of cool, but I wasn't super intrigued until the siege was revealed, and that's when I ended up backing it. Um, I was intrigued before that just because it was Hundred Years' War. Yeah. With mythology, yeah, it's got, so the apocalypse has occurred in, yeah, and, it's, and and all of the um, fantastical mythical stuff is um, based on the images that we see from the art of that era, which is pretty cool. So everything, things look kind of weird. The skeletons are like look like they're dancing and and they're blowing flutes they're because macabre, that yeah. they were doing the whole dance macabre thing. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start unboxing. We're gonna start with the core box, which or, is actually. Not the largest box. No. Uh, I think the Siege is the thick... Yeah, the Siege is the thickest yeah. of the boxes. So we're going to start with the Joan of Arc. We're going to go on the Reliquary box, which is a bunch more stuff in it, but it's basically holding a bunch of the stretch goals. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the Super Exclusives, the Village, Legendary Battles, some of the smaller sets, and then we're going to move on to the Siege, which has the castle and everything, which is the thing that I was really excited for. So, let's go ahead and... All right. Pop this open. Well, first part. <clears throat> yes. So this is not going to be the retail release from what we've seen. The retail release is going to be like 60 bucks and it's going to be about half the size. So this is just Kickstarter. Still, and it's a... It's really, really It's big. a brick. Yeah. And they're about to launch... I think by the time I actually upload this to YouTube, they'll have launched the Kickstarter for 1.5. They're doing an update of the rules. Um, if... if you're a previous backer and you backed it for anything, but you end up getting um, the, the, the new rules for free as long as you buy something from the new Kickstarter. Um, and the new Kickstarter is going to have like the Teutonic Knights and things like that. And then who knows what they're going to have for stretch goals. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the core box. Because it's not really meant for retail, it also doesn't have like details as to what's in it on the back. And you can see it's... Just the art assets. On yeah, art the art is beautiful. Insane. So they, they, they spared no expense. Yeah. And then it's in uh, both English and French. I got, of course, the English version, but they did release a version, a full version in French. And they are some, a French company. Yeah, they are a French company. And some of the items come with both French and English, um, like cards and rule books and yeah. stuff like that, because they, did, they didn't, didn't want to have to recreate everything. So I like the material of the... It's quilted. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Or a, uh, like a silk finish. Yeah. Ah, there we go. All right. So we have a bunch of boxes in here. We've got all the dice. Cubes. Cubes. Which I've got, one of the things I've got is replacements for the cubes. So instead of using cubes, you use these little banners. Cool. So um, there's small cards. 
there's regular size cards, and then there are the characters are all tarot size cards because they're a bit larger. And those, these are looks like these are American sized or or not 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 the small Euro style. They're like the magic uh, card size. Yeah, ones. magic cards, yeah. so they should be easy to sleeve. Yeah, universally so. Yeah, and then the small ones are the standard small size you see from like Fantasy Flight and stuff. So mm -hmm. those should also be easy to find. And I've seen tarot card sleeves around so that those should yeah. be they should all be pretty easy to find sleeves for they on the kickstarter they did have sleeves and they'll have it for the new one as well i just didn't back them because i knew that i've got a bunch of sleeves and i can always get more pretty cheaply yeah. so we're gonna open this first box all right here my so here is the the church it has stained glass windows on multiple sides and i've seen some really cool stuff with that so this will be fun to paint it's got uh bells in the bell tower and it's hollow but this is a really solid piece of plastic i like like i'm trying to bend it here and it's not bend, bending at all so there, it's a really thick how is it it doesn't yeah have, it doesn't have, have a uh, like it was just printed in china five days ago smell yeah it doesn't so really smell yeah it doesn't smell cheap good. at all so this is the chapel this is the, the larger large house tavern. Small and those houses, small houses, yeah. Which came. So the yeah. large house is two floors, and those are one floor. So that is. And a cool little. Let's yeah, hold it. This will so, hold it all. That's a cool box, too. That's a great box. Yeah. yeah there's a, there, I mean, yeah, just think of these. Boxes. You can just, if you have the right size carry case, you could pack yeah. things very cleanly, especially for going to cons or. Yeah. Um, let's do the second largest box here. All right. That stuff's spilling out. Okay. So we have the Tarrasque here. Which, not originally a D&D &D mythology. Yeah. It's actually from France, and it was a, a known known creature in South France. Yeah. Um, we've got the unicorn. We have some angels, which look really cool. Yeah, they do. I like those. Really good dynamic pose. Yeah. Uh, here's, uh, I can't remember if this is supposed to be. I think it's Michael. I think it's Mike. Yeah, because it's either Michael or Gabriel. Was one of them appears with the, in the devil box, which I didn't pick up mm. um, to fight him. So I think Michael is, I think this is Gabriel because I think Michael is the other one. Yeah, so then we've got these, these oxen that have, have the little chain between them, and there is. Oh, it there actually it has a hook. It actually has a hook, so you can have them them actually move pull between it. hexes and be. Yeah. And there's all kinds of barrels in there and stuff like that, so that'll be really cool. It'll look nice on the battlefield, and it, yeah, and you can actually because they're two separate pieces, you can actually have the uh, curvatures and put a, the curve uh, as they're moving. Yeah, a wagon. Yeah, turn. Very cool. All right, that's gonna be fun to paint. And then spill down below are just uh, base holders of various sizes. So you can pop the miniatures down into here to identify like which unit they are. And there's like lots of there's black, uh, white, red, and blue. Blue. And then grays for neutrals, and that way you no, can no, separate. No, no, that no gray is these are these are the oh, trays for actually yeah. popping you put the miniatures into here to move them as units. They the models actually the number of models on a base don't actually mean anything. The unit like it counts as a single troop, essentially everything that's on the base. Um, it's just to make it so you have more stuff. Um, so it looks cooler. Um, so these, the ones that have just two holes, are um, those are for cavalry, and then the ones that have three are for infantry. And so yeah, we've got all the large, all the different bases there. Yeah, okay, it's the flat box. You forget how, like, you know that they're 15 millimeter, but then you forget how tiny they are. So this is just... That's a double tray. Yeah. Oh, cool. Double tray. So these are just tons of knights and men-at-arms and looks like a bunch of... Yeah, the Beast of Gwadadon. A bunch of the characters. Of Gwadadon. The werewolf. Oh, yeah, the werewolf there. And then you have Bowman on horseback. We have Joan of Arc here. 
who she looks a little bit like she's bent back, so I may have to adjust her. But that's to be expected when you've got tiny little legs on let's say, tiny little figures. So I'll, I'll boil the figure and yeah, straighten it back. Yeah, pretty up. easy. Uh, if you've never, never done it before, I've actually got a video up on, water. on the YouTube. You did? Yeah, I've got a video up there, so I can check that out. So it's just a ton of treats there. And then we've got even more in all these little baggies. We've got uh, here's some crossbowmen with their um, pavices. And yeah, there's just there's a bunch of angry peasants. Oh, well, those are skeletons. Yeah, there's the skeletons with their sickles that they're carrying. As one harvest souls yeah. with. Uh, wolves, which is part of the initial scenario you play. Yeah. Yeah, so just lots and lots of your basic troops there. Oh, and then it also came with these uh, little sticker sheets that have all kinds of different um, heraldry on them for you to use on your um, decals or decals, decals if you're above the 49th parallel. Yeah. You can use those on your miniatures. All, all right. right. So here's some more, more terrain. We've got trees that they actually did in brown and green. Cool. So you don't even have to paint them. But and it would be easy to use that as a base color for yeah. for painting. Yeah. In fact, it'd be easy enough just to ink it. If you just inked that or did a, mm -hmm. a dip and I've seen on a lot that, of people you'd have a great yeah. looking tree. Um, there's some stone walls there. We have our little pike pikes. Right. Or, yeah, so we can put those in front of our um, archers. We've got mm, there's some ruins. Um, oh, this is like a bunch of random things. Like we have rocks and a well and a little shrine and stuff like that. And then we've got a shrubbery. Mm. Might need two. Let's set that over there. And then we've got the rule book, which is this is just the English rule book. Not, not thick. No, it's so not too bad. that's awesome. Yeah, and I flipped um, through the rules that they've had the digital copies of online in there. It's one who's had read plenty and written plenty of yeah. far too long rule books for games. That's um, that's great. Yeah. Um, then they have an advertisement oh. for the Joan of Arc Historial. Um, it's it looks like it's actually like a tour of um, the places the places that Joan of Arc nice. visited and stuff. Uh, scenario uh, booklet. Mm -hmm. With a uh, a duck on the sorry a witch on the back. Yes, and then there's uh, two player aids here that are double sided, give you all the different skills and things like that you need to know. Ooh, then that's my favorite part. Yeah, one of the few things I like getting a high off of. Yeah, punch board. Yeah, lots of punch boards. So there's there's this big huge piece here wow. that you actually use this to sort of track things throughout the game. Oh. I'm actually, it's it's only one-sided. <laughs> so you track a bunch of things throughout the game. Um, and then... We well, got bigger than I thought. Yeah, so the, the tiles... These are, those are six Are real big, tiles. they're six-inch tiles. But on the... If you played Twilight Imperium, those are, those are three-and-a-half-inch tiles. Yeah, so these are really, really big. But the new... Um, the new Kickstarter, they actually have... You can choose for like $30... You can buy all the core set tiles at like I think eight or ten inches. Oof. So they're just larger. They're identical. They're just bigger. You can so you can fit more them. stuff onto them because when, one once, once you begin getting guys onto them, once can, you begin then they all just these boxes. Well, no. The it, the issue is is that they, like this hex here has two spaces on it. Okay. There's the line. A certain number of troops can fit onto each one, but if you do all of them it does get pretty tight. Yeah, yeah. They do fit, it's just, it's very, very tight. So by making the this the hexes larger, it makes them so that they can all fit. Of course, then one might 3D print some really large hexes yourself with, with some wheat, and then you can do some flocking and really yeah. get some cool... I'm at least going to try to do some with like with like foam board yeah. um, because I can only print off like four inches, but I'll use like, I'll use 3D printed elements for them and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm thinking about trying... So that's to, happening. Yeah. yeah. It's going to happen eventually. So lots and lots of pages of the hexes. 
and some of the hexes are actually joined together as like a three, three hex um, oh, section, so you oh, have yeah. larger areas that you don't have to put all of them together. Um, if a character is flies up in the air, <laughs> it's like the angels and so have a separate other three dimensionality. Yeah. That's cool. And then we've got each of the players gets one of these little boards that tells you which orders you're going to be using. And when this, you play. this other sheet's your duplicate of that one. Yeah, it's the same one. Yeah. But then there's like cool flame. Which there's actually flames stuff like too. There were modeled flames. Yes. There. Yeah. Good markers. All right. So that's that's just the core box. And now if you got any questions, to... we'll start putting this away. Yeah. Do we even have anybody on the stream? Whoa. I don't... <laughs> uh I can't actually see. We've got anybody. Say hi, guys. Two viewers. Yeah. All right. It's not, just, it's not just your phone. No. No, I'm not on here. So we've got two viewers. So if you have any questions, we can answer them um, as we put all this away to move on to the uh, the next box. And we'll just set these in here for now. Set it right over there. All right. So now we're going to get the reliquary box. Mm. So this has, there we go. This has the beast on it from Revelation. And go ahead. on the back has the, um, has Celadon being carried by a genie. Um, this box contains everything that was the standard stretch goals. So that was everything that it said when the Kickstarter first began. So if all you backed was the base game, you also got this. Yes. Everything else was add-on. Yeah. Well, and the super exclusive box, which we'll get to right after this. Because there was some stuff that you could only get, like you couldn't, if you were a late pledger, you did not get the super exclusive. And they really played up the fact that Things are going to start heading towards the Middle East and the Crusades, which the a lot of the Teutonic Knights, Knights they have like cover the, that. The so Knights is four total faction at that point. Um, it looked like, from what I saw, they, they showed some of uh, of the Tartars, who are like mm. the Mongols. Mm -hmm. So we'll begin to we'll begin moving start heading east, more, getting a little yeah. bit more of that. So they said the whole point of the Time of Legends. This is Time of Legends Joan of Arc, right? Yeah. And so that they can do Time of Legends. Genghis Khan, which would yeah. be the wrong time period, unless of course he's a time traveler, or or they just undead, you know, who knows? It doesn't necessarily but always have to be the same time period. It's just they, they can use this rule set, yeah. And then if you want, you can have you know the Mongols Mists fighting against. Yeah. So we've got um, the reliquary thing here. This it's we have both the French and the English. So they were just getting that out there for everybody. This has uh, new scenarios in it. Um, it has a miniature reference on the back, so you can figure out what everything means because. One thing they did, too, was they released alternate sculpts. So we got a bunch more peasants, but not the same sculpt. Cool. So you, they have to be able Which to explain. is better than more. Yeah. So they have to be able to explain, okay, these are also peasants. Who's that? That is Dracula. And they have both a historical Dracula as well as the vampire version of Dracula. Um, cool. So you can play with either. So we got more cards. And these are both in French and English. So I'll... Get, an, it, it get was, a little it was cheaper box. for them to yeah. double print than it was for them to try to figure out exactly who, what box went to who. And I'll just get a little cardboard box and put all my French cards in there. I saw people saying they were going to throw their French cards away, and I was like, I don't throw anything away. <laughs> you never know if you're going to be a game designer. Keep yeah. the cards. You can always use them for backing. That just looks gorgeous. I mean, yeah. look, look at this. Not that one. But that one, there you go. It's got a skull. Good enough, right? I mean, come on. Use that for your backing. Uh, save cards. Don't throw away cards. It's not going to take us up that much space. All right. So. That's cool. Just, <laughs> just a dumb peasant on a donkey. Yeah, this is the... I can't remember what his... He's got some sort of a official... I can't remember what he is. I think he's, he's building a good engineer. I think, yeah, I think he's like an engineer. He's got an axe and he's got a donkey carrying some wood. Axe and axe. Um, we have a culverine here. An early cannon. And it's got two little empty spots for you to put troops on there. Um, this is where we've got 
mounted Joan of Arc, who looks awesome. Cool. We've got, yeah, there's Dracula, the big vampire. Whoa. Uh, we've got Death. Nice. There's a whole scenario where you play the Black Plague, and one person <laughs> is Death going through and killing everybody. So there's not a model for Lunar Badman, like being a buddy. So, team. tons of different. Oh, and it looks like some of the Janissaries, who are the oh, yeah. um, the uh, Ottoman sure, yeah. soldiers, they've got bent bases. So, again, something I'm going to have to try to fix, but you can see. That one will be a, be a little bit of a charge. They, they, admittedly, they oh, are. What a few of them are. are really there's, oh, there's a bear. And there's a little dog. Yes. Yeah, there's a bear tamer cool. in there as well. You know, I'll say the the um, the scale is definitely heroic scale. It's not yeah. true scale, but it's 15 Well, no, what it is, so. it's, it's 15 millimeters for the basic troops. It's like yeah. 18 millimeters for the heroes. The well, heroes like even this hero, he's, he's in heroic. Yeah, his, his hands aren't hands aren't huge. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. like like the, like Warhammer. The scale but of they them are. Yeah, they they actually chugging. did a really interesting thing with the scale where they they did sort of change the proportions yeah. so that the heads are bigger. The the chainmail you can actually see the links, but it's because they made them like twice the size that yeah. they really should be, and it's to make it so you can actually exactly. tell what's going on on the battlefield. Uh oh, All right. uh oh, is this it? I believe you're already. So the great thing about the beast is that you could use this for D&D &D and it's still a massive creature for D&D. &D. <laughs> but when you put it up next to a 15 millimeter figure, it's just insignificant in size. There's Henry V. I got you! You can barely see him in Andrew's hand because he's so small. Here so for they're truly epic. And then you can put it up next to... Like up next to a single story building, it's massive. And then you even put it up next to the chapel. Yeah. It's over. And it, yeah. Just, it can like walk over the top of the castle walls. So Fly. that's going to be a choice. lot of, yeah. That's going to be a lot of paint up. Oh, that's empty. Cool. Just to make sure they got the space. We'll fill up. And we got some other big guys. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of small guys. So, we have the griffin. Oh, yeah. Which looks awesome. And again, again, this is, like, large for a D&D &D yeah. griffin. Yeah, that would so, be a good mount. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then we've got the cockatrice here. Again, a fantastic D&D &D monster as well. Like, cockatrice is supposed to be much smaller than that, so this is just... Like the boss cockatrice, and then it's so much bigger for a 15 millimeter. And then, yeah, show that off. So there's Celadon being carried on a flying carpet by a djinn with his guards. No itty bitty, 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 bitty living space here. Yeah. With a tent, you know, if we want yeah. to sleep uh, during travel. First class. And the detail. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the carpet. Detail. The carpet is highly, highly detailed. I've seen some people paint that, and it's, like, I'm excited to do it, but also really not excited, yeah. because that's going to be a lot of work. A lot of work. Yeah. So let's move that out of the way. And then underneath these were basically all those troops that were the alternate sculpts. So we got, like, two different other sculpts of peasants. The nice thing is, is because you're putting them all onto these um, bases that can contain three, I think for pretty much everything, we got three different sculpts. So we'll be able to have, every single base will have a variety of sculpts yeah. on them. And, you know, it depends on what kind of player you are. You could choose to intermix all of them. So mm -hmm. all your French peasants are intermixed. Or you could say, nope, these are the French peasants. Paint yeah. them all identical. Because there's also one thing is that the cards, there isn't just, like, one peasant. Like, there's different, like, there was one that's, like, the angry peasants. Yeah. And so you can choose to put them all on separate bases, and then that helps you differentiate them when you're actually playing them. Um, so, yeah, there's a bunch of different... Archers. Kind of peasants. Here's some uh, some flagellants here. They got big bells around their neck and they're running forward. Um, halberdiers. Actually, those are yeah, those are eastern is, halberdiers. Yeah, and this is some more halberdiers with uh, some demons in there mixed in there as well. Crossbow movies. Yeah. Cool. All right. So that's the reliquary box. 
Oh, it's going to require a lot of cleanup after <laughs> we're done on the stream. All right. Let's do the super exclusives now. So these, again, were ones that um, they were only available in the original Kickstarter. They won't even be available in the new Kickstarter because they had promised that they wouldn't. And then they asked people if they minded if they made them available. And they got outvoted and told that they that people didn't want other people to have them, which I thought was kind pretty dumb. dumb. Like, just let other people have them. Who cares? They're like, no, I was, ex I was, ex I was a, a backer. So you said these would be super yeah. exclusive. I mean, I mean, you you could meet halfway if it had been less of them being exclusive, mm -hmm. and knowing that each starter was going to have a nice tight set of them. But yeah, I I don't think they'll do super exclusives for this next yeah. one. Less um, learned because they don't want to not be. I'm I'm sure they're probably sitting on a bunch of these now, thinking that they were gonna maybe yeah. be able to get away with it. And I'm sure that in some way they will find a way to like give them away at cons or something, which again, I'm perfectly fine with. Yeah. So we've got the cards um, for all the different characters. They have a couple little baggies, which is nice. So we got some extra baggies in there. No, no, no. Oh yeah. Who's here on the side? Yeah, we got Leo, who was the um, guy who was basically presenting everything during the Kickstarter. Um, I I know that's, oh, that's, probably that's one of the other. I think that's one of the designers. Yeah. I, I really only paid attention during the live stuff. And then on the side is Leo's cat kept showing up on the stream. And so there's like more lies. And then on the front, we have Last Gog and lives. Magog, the, the two giants who are heralding the apocalypse. So we have the super exclusive booklets mm, that's yeah, got fold out. Fold out art. Yeah. So they got some big full art in there. There's more scenarios in here. Um, is it just scenarios? Yeah, it's just scenarios that you forgot that you have to yeah. use this stuff for the dungeons. Well, so each building, every single building, has a little interior tile. So if your characters go inside, you can actually like show them inside, which really is nice for D and D, because here you have the different floors. Oh, and if the building's ruined, you flip over the base ground floor to be ruined. Right. So this is a very large building, which we will show you in a second. Okay, so it's just these two boxes here. This feels yep. All right. So here we have Gog and Magog, who, priest and a warrior. As I've said before, with everything, these are big for D and D. You can use yeah. these as giants in D and D, but they are giants for fifteen mm -hmm. millimeter, which makes them. That much bigger, which I really like. I mean, D&D, it's more ogre than giant. Like, a, they'd be, yeah, they'd be a smaller yeah. giant. I've seen a few giants that are this size for things. But, like, this guy, his uh, shield is just made of scraps of buildings. He's got heads hanging off the back of his... Yeah, he's got heads hanging off the back. He's got um, a skeleton in, his, in a cage hanging around his waist on the front. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of little details on that that's pretty cool. And then the other guy is more of, like, a sorceress type. And he's got these weird, like, swirl of energy coming out of his back that's got faces trapped inside. This is much more like the, the magical, supernatural mm -hmm. giant. So they're the Heralds of the Apocalypse. And then you got three little miniatures you know, of... There's a tornado coming out of his back. Yeah. A, a, a Cthulhu. Yeah, that's a tentacle. Faces coming out. And then, so you, then you've got the, the three... Um, innkeepers so you've got the innkeeper who's the designer you've got the cat who's sitting on a little mm -hmm. barrel so that he isn't yeah. just completely lost asleep on the barrel and then you've got leo here he's holding presenting a, holding a little beer <laughs> very happy big old smile he usually had a beer on it in his hand yeah. when he was presenting and so so the point of this building this here, is not their first kickstarter no they've they done the, this is their they, first they solo the, kickstarter the previous ones were done with um like yeah. monolith games so, um, his, the way he would welcome people to the stream was he'd say, you're in a good place. So the very last uh, stretch goal was a super, a super exclusive that was a good place in. So this is a massive building. It's got a little sign hanging out. 
the, out the front. It says a good place on one side and Le Bon Etroy on the other. So they have it in English and French. And that's what those floors are for. So you can have people on each different cool. floor. Um, and there's a whole, there's multiple scenarios behind it. Now I looked through some of the scenarios for like the village pack and one of the missions is in no way a combat game. It's basically you're playing Settlers of Catan. So I think that I think oh. the good place in is going to have a similar scenario. Cool. I'll have to see, cool. but but it's going to be sort of like a maybe you're like trying to manage the tavern yeah. or something like that. So the great thing is the rules are pretty flexible that you can run yeah. all kinds of different things. I, I redact my statement. This so. is not a lot when it comes to super exclusives. Yeah, it's not like there's fifty things. Yeah, so it's okay that it's super exclusive. Yeah, and if they did this again. That's, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. That this I, group got this. Mm -hmm. and, and somebody else gets something, something else. else. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like there's yeah. like, well, there's super exclusives. There's boxes and boxes and boxes yeah. of little, little guys. It's five things. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a pretty cool, like, centerpiece for your town. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to get into more stuff for your town. You can, you're going to be able to build an entire town with everything. Which is, like, one of the first things I'm going to do just for fun. Just to see how yeah. big of a town I can make. Okay. Did, did this have a... Uh, no, no, it just slid in there, and then the way that that folded in kept it locked in place. So, let's look at some of the smaller stuff. So, uh, Wave 2 had some uh, bannermen and uh, musicians, because they had said that those were going to be in the set, and then they forgot to include them in Wave 1. Um, so they sent them in the little baggie. They just forgot to, they just did, didn't end up making it in the box. Um, then I picked this up because it's just more historical scenarios. Everything I backed was the historical stuff. I wanted all of the, um, the Hundred Years' War stuff. So I made sure to pick up the Battle of Cravant, which has a scenario and some more cards that give variation to the, the troops you already have. So there's actually no new, um, there's no new, uh, models in it it's just and it, so it was like it was like five bucks so it was a pretty cheap little little pack so that was the battle of Kavant. just a couple new scenarios all right uh then these are the cards that there was some major typos and really bad unbalance that people immediate, noticed immediately mm -hmm. so they ended up reissuing these cards in wave two huh. so those are just updated cards then this is what you paid for. It is. This is Ars Nova. So this is taking the rules for Joan of Arc and then basically you're playing Name of the Rose. Yeah, which but, if you've not seen the movie, it's pretty cool. If you've not read yeah. the book, that's even better. And it's starring Sean Connery. Yeah. And <laughs> the monk who's investigating is Sean Connery. Yeah. So I'm glad I picked this up before the Sean Connery estate suits. And, 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 yeah. look. and you know, it's a story that the whole book is is uh, such a nod to everything because his name is William of Baskerville, yeah, and he's a Sher and he's and he's Sherlock as a monk, yeah, but it's Sean Connery. But it's, there's Sean a monk Connery. who's been murdered, and then he's trying yeah. to figure out who did it. And I have a thing for monasteries, and I've designed a, a version about monasteries, so I was like, you, you have to get this. And then it, um, it's not available anymore, but you can find it online. Uh, the, uh, the, name mystery, of the, the Mystery of the Abbey. Yeah, there's that too, yeah. Um, is a board game that I've loved for years. Yeah. And it is, it's the Name of the Rose. Oh, it just yeah. And there's a the Name of the Rose board game too. Yeah, yeah. There's the Name of the Rose. So, again, it's got all the different monks and everything. Mm -hmm. um, it has... This is, considered, this is the smallest expansion they, they put out. Yes. Uh, available, yeah. you know, heavy expansion. Uh, the Ars Nova Controversy is the name of the scenario. And it is detailed. It's... And... It's oh, a non-conflict there, There's, there's story. two scenarios. There's the Abbey of the Three Fountains and Ars Nova Controversy. Yeah, it's it's not... Um, you aren't fighting. It's instead, like, the dice are used to, like, represent, like, intrigue and you're trying yeah. to investigate things. Without getting killed. Uh, it explains what the different intrigue cards are. There's dark intrigue cards, like that there's a satanic cult. Uh, there's somebody who's the demonist. Huh. So, that'll be fun. Um, let's get those out of the way. Then the tiles have different pieces pieces of a monastery. There we go. We might have, have to do some 3D printing. Yeah. Yeah, because there, there's a whole graveyard here. And I've actually got the 3D files to do a graveyard. I just have yeah. to print them off at half size. 
So we could do that. Um, that would be pretty cool. And then they've got interiors on the, all the different cool. buildings as well. Cloister. Yeah, there's a whole cloister there. Chapter house. Time. Yeah, because not all of these are meant to have buildings on top of them, but oh, that, that's, we want to that, have a building on top of them. That's the manuscript. Yeah. the... Uh... Manuscriptorum. Yes. So there's there's trackers. This this I don't I haven't looked at the rules yet for this scenario, but it this sort of like reveals clues and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not sure how it works, but that's what that. Basically, means. someone in at the company wanted to do a board game, and they designed a board game within the realm of so they could just games. yeah yeah. So you've got all the different monks in here. There's different types of monks. There's um, some novices. Mm -hmm. There's guys carrying the crosses and stuff like that. And 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 correctly costumed because uh, it takes place in a Benedictine Abbey, but mm -hmm. he's Franciscan. Yeah, and I'm and I'm assume you know if you have an Inquisitor too, then you can bring the Inquisitor into. Yeah, the Inquisitor is in the yeah. core box, yeah. I believe. Uh, there's a sand timer, which cool. looks like Brown it's sand. thirty seconds. It looks that. Like it's, it's like you count it while I show off right. the different things. So we've got. Um, some more of those large cards, some more tiny cards, some more of those. And the great thing is because there's a battle mode where you can play the entire, you can play with all the stuff in just straight up like Warhammer style battles with points and everything. So you can even play with the monks. I don't know how they work, but they, you, there's all kinds of non-combat. 15 seconds. 15 second timer. Wow. That's cool. There's all kinds of non-combatant units, mm -hmm. but they have the little bases so you can actually have the monks used in the game. Going around bolstering the troops, I guess. So that's that. That's pretty awesome. Then, all right. This is the plunder pack. This one I backed during the second pledge manager. They they ran a couple, um, so I was able to come back to getting more stuff. In fact, I think I had, in the initial one, I had backed the core stuff and like, I think Siege yeah. and Ars Nova. And I wanted the other stuff, but I couldn't afford it. And then when it opened up again, it, it gave happening. me the chance to then add more stuff onto it. So. And no doubt a lot of this is going to be available again in the next Kickstarter. Too. All, everything so. will be, of everything except the super exclusives yeah. is available from the start. In the in the one point five. Now, Kickstarter. why did we back this one? It was important. This one, yes. So the all of the cubes that are used to like give different orders and stuff. Instead, they they have these banners and there's stickers that go on the banners, and you use the banners instead, mm -hmm. and it just looks a lot nicer than the cubes. Because you and I are planning on trying to not just play during the arc, but yes, we're gonna run the entire hundred years war, all hundred years. We've got a whole other board game that we're using. This to could track take us the world. years. Yeah, and but that's we should goal. definitely. Vlog, yeah. We vlog it uh, yeah. afterwards. What, what we've done and yeah. know, what's and I'm and I'm planning what's on changed in history. Reports, yeah, um, things are going to change. Yeah, when I wreck your France. Yeah, he's playing yeah. English. I'm playing France. And certain heroes are only available once they actually were born and actually in operations. Um, this is the which of course could change if somebody survives a battle that you're supposed to die. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, this here is uh, the a dice tower. Oh, cool. You can use cool. so, and it came with. More dice and more bases for everything. Awesome. Now, some people have been going and gluing the miniatures to the bases because there's you never have to like during a game remove like one figure. They just, the whole unit gets removed. and then you just flock and base it. And then yeah, and then it looks really really nice with all together. However, I want to use these things for stuff like D and D, mm -hmm. so I can't have everybody on the same on bases. Yeah. So the plan is is that I'm going to use uh, blue tack. A lot of people would use that. It's fine. Yeah. And then you just have to flock it in just the right way that you don't really notice. Just, just do line mark, do line markers. Yeah. To line so that you can... Yeah. A lot of ways around it. Yeah. So that was the plunder pack. And then... Now we have the village. And the village I was excited for because as everybody who's been on my Twitter lately has seen me putting together all these buildings for 28mm, I love village stuff. And so being able to build an entire little town is going to be great. So this has a bunch of snares. Like I said, this is the one that has the the Settlers of Catan one where you're supposed to be like 
raising up resources to be able to send your lord off to the crusades or something like that. Yeah, it's a good break, too, if you've been playing this mm -hmm. week in, week out, and we do something different. Yeah. But I painted all these minis. Okay, well, let's play yeah. Settlers. So there's the village. It's got all the villagers. It's got the cockatrice on that. And, all right. More cards. The cool thing is that they have these, they're with these sc scenarios... They have like these question cards where when you ask if you ask certain questions you get certain benefits and stuff like that. Alright. Seems excessive. <laughs> yeah. A lot of empty beneath that. I probably would have finished filling the box. Yeah, they the just box. need to finish filling it. Uh, we've got sheep. We have dogs, we have peasants, cows, and horses. So you can fill your fields with everything. Ooh, that'll be fun to paint those horses. Yeah. I had really good success painting Ben's horses um, different mm. different breeds. Yeah. Helping it out. And I've seen actually a lot of success with painting horses using the, the new um, uh, contrast paints from Games Workshop mm -hmm. because it's really easy to slap them with white and then you throw on the contrast paint and you use like three or four different colors for the contrast paints to give them their solid different colors. All right, here is the water mill. No. Cool. And the cool thing is this set introduces uh, river pieces. So you actually have the water mill. There's a little bridge going across the water mill. So if you're playing a scenario, you can try to like seize that bridge and hold it to keep the everybody else from crossing it. I mean, ninjas in the water. Yeah. There's ninjas in France, right? Yeah, yeah. of course. They're, they're everywhere. Yeah. You don't know. You wouldn't Did, know. You, you didn't see them. No. It's like uh, vampires so, in space. Yeah, can't see them because exactly. all of our like, all of our all of our mirrors. Yeah, yeah, you never know. Uh, so the, the the wheel doesn't turn, which is fine because it means to look yeah. like it's going down in the water. So, it's but I guarantee you, someone online. Has oh yeah, somebody's got to it. Got and water. for a while, I'd considered drilling holes in all the windows yeah. so that I could put a little tea light inside yeah. or LEDs. Yeah, but this this is actually really really thick plastic, yeah. so it would be really difficult to do, and I also don't want to risk ruining it when I'm not going to be able to easily oh, get to print some, I guess. Yeah, and that's the thing, is I've actually got, um, there's a, already a building that I've 3D printed um, that I've got in 28 millimeter, and they have, as part of the files, a solid, um, a solid piece that you can print it as, and so I'm going to print that at just half size, and that'll give me my 15 millimeter, and I can print a bunch of those, and I, so that I can give me more stuff in my village. All right, so here we have even more trees, and my Another thought is Another shrubbery. And more, yep, more shrubberies and more tents. And the tents, I'm gonna paint up like Harold Harold colors and everything. Um, and the trees, some of them I'm going to paint that they're beginning to turn oh, no. to fall, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna paint a couple of them as they are fall, um, because I added it up and there's like there's like 30 trees in here, which is a lot for this scale, like that you don't necessarily need all that much. So, that would be cool. Also, I do want to do a, I want to write up a scenario where you actually, it's a jousting tournament. So you use the knights, and you use the, the tents and everything, and you can run an entire jousting tournament. Uh, I just have to, like, once I've learned the rules really well, it'll be easier for me to... If I've already got the cast for this, I wonder if they've done... Trees. Or at least those trees. Probably. I would think so. Alright, so we got some more cool. buildings here. Some huts. So we have another large size building, and then we've got three huts That's, yeah. that have hovels, if you yeah. will. Yeah, they've got wood piles on the side. That's true. Cottages! Yeah, Thatch roof cottages. One thing I didn't back, that I'm planning on backing with the new one, is the dragon. Yeah. Because it's really cool, and also I'm just going to paint... be more dragons. Because yeah. we head farther east. Yeah. There's going to be more dragons. But this dragon is, it's huge, again, by D&D &D standards. It's the massive. dragon alone was worth... I saw it at yeah. Gen Con before it yeah. came out, and it's like, it is the cheapest yeah. dragon at a higher, not quite GW. I mean, GW, you can't yeah. you can't beat GW yeah. when it comes to actual, like, little, little detail. Yeah. But it's worth every penny. Yeah. It, it's it's easily what you would pay for GW for a $120 dragon. Well, and my, for, what was it, what, 30 bucks? 40 bucks? No, it was, it was like 60. Still. And I think, I think it's going to be a little bit more expensive I'm than sure. Kickstarter. But... My plan is, because it's roughly the size of Games Workshop Smog, which is like $700, mm -hmm. my plan is to yeah. paint it up red, and then yeah. use um, like glittery gold 
paint on its chest to actually make. I'm basically gonna make yeah, it smog I, that I can also use for. It wouldn't it would and it wouldn't be. It's not an imperial dragon size when it comes to like for D, for D and D. It's not an imperial dragon ancient scale dragon. wise. Yeah, the, the ancient. Yeah. No. Yeah. It is. I, I, I think, it, I think it it's two down. I think I think it's a full it's, adult. It's big. It no, because like, adults like this big. Like it's it's massive. I it yeah. would be an. I would use it as an ancient dragon for D and D. Okay. Yeah. Um, so here's a bridge. Mm. That's a stone bridge, and then you've got there's two wooden you say bridges. Kwai in France. Kwai? Yeah, the bridge Kwai. Oh yeah, the bridge over the river Kwai. Uh, no, I can't, I can't think up. of the word. Yeah. Um, so here's the two uh, wood bridges. So you can blow cool. those up, light them on yeah. fire if you need to. Uh, and then there's more ruins here. In fact, those probably are equal. Those match up with the houses. They match up. Oh, well, with the, like the little those houses. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, that's what they are. Yeah, so they're they're the small that's cool. houses yeah. that have been ruined. So and, and then and then yeah, we have more fires, more rocks. Oh yeah, there's some campfires, campfires, cool, and some rocks and some more of the yeah. um the stone walls, little stone half walls. Yeah, with vines. Yeah, there's vines running all over them. So it's it's great because there's lots of stuff that you can use for. Um, Here's the box here. Then, of course, we've got this, the two scenario books, um, and then more of the uh, tiles. As you can see, there's the, there's the river stuff. So there's all kinds of river tiles, different bends and turns and everything. Cool. Um, there's even a, a lake. A lake. Yeah. And a sword well. model. Yeah. That's actually, I would love to see Time of Legends. King Arthur? Yeah, go back. Oh, well, even better. What, what would you want, though? Do you want it to be the high fake Arthur, or would you go back into Kimri and ancient I, know, Roman, Roman, Roman versus Celt? I would do it Arthur. as, like, the, as the mytholo mythological, like, which is roughly the Hundred Years' War era for, like, style, just a little bit more over the top. All right. Okay. So that is, yep. Now we're gonna hit the legendary battles. How long have we been streaming for? Oh, about 45 minutes. It's not too bad. I thought it would be a little longer than that. Oh, oh no. no. Y'all figure that out. <laughs> um, all right. Legendary battles. So, legendary battles just introduces a ton more troops and also those little uh, discs that go underneath. Those little discs that go underneath um, in more colors. So, it looks like we're losing our uh, no our our stream power. We're running out of who else is streaming? Running out of stream power. Who's taking our so, car? So this may be a little bit. This may be a little bit choppy, and I may not upload it onto YouTube. Depending. All right. So here is more bases, more of the little discs. There we have green and yellow now, and that's so that you can play some of the scenarios in here. Are for more? No, more of these scenarios. Some of these scenarios are for like six players. So you can play six player games, which is really nice. Uh, they got more of the cubes mm -hmm. in case you need them for the in case you didn't do the plunder pack. Let's see. We got some more troops here. Another thing is because we got some oh we got some knights here, charging knights. Some really yeah. nice charging knights. Um, one thing we didn't I didn't get very much of is the stretch goals had some Ottoman guys. I did not buy the Ottoman pack, mm -hmm. so I think I'm gonna buy the Ottoman. Pack so I can have a full Ottoman sure. army as well. All right. So there's the couple little knights. With that little tiny box, I think they just didn't quite have enough room, and they're like, "We got it. We got to shift something around." All right. We got troops falling out the bottom, and we have. Oh, these are um, these are a new figure. Um, these are sergeants at arms on horseback. Cool. So just your. And lot, just more. lots more, lots more troops yep. of every of every kind: archers and peasants with clubs and knives. Yep, Some knights brigands. with axes, cool. stuff like that. So it's just a lot more troops for everything. And then 
Oh yes. See, when I when I was talking about there being a lot of trees, because I meant it. <laughs> There's even more trees. There's even more little spike rows, and there's even and there's some palisades in here that are printed in brown. I think I set this up wrong for the light, but yeah. So we've got palisades. You can actually set up um, those, and then we got even more cards, including some new um, character cards, uh, like Charles Dabre and stuff like that. So you've got some other historical. Guys. Then we've got, of course, more of the rules that have, let's see, is it just scenarios? Yep. Lots, they have the battle, this is has the Battle of Ashen Court in it, because you need everybody involved in that. Yeah, but not many walk away off. So. Nope. And then you've got two more character so things. Five and six player. Five and six player. Yeah. More maps more tokens representing different things and these are starting to fall apart so I'm going to keep them as is. So, even more so, what I want to do at some point is take all of the hexes and see how big a battlefield you can create. Because what I want to do is do a siege where you've got the whole village outside and you've got one person playing the villagers trying to get in while the rest of the nobility is like, we're going to seal up these doors if you guys don't get in in time. We'll have to do that at the game shop. Yeah, yeah. Or we'll do like a big game all day game. Now, now we're going to move on to the siege. This is the last box, right? It is the last box, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, 35 minutes ago, one of my friends said, Not sure if you or me, but the stream is a bit choppy. Guess you're streaming from Wi Fi. Which, yes, yes, I am. Let's open that. That's probably why we don't have many watt watchers and why we have zero kilobytes per second. But we're recording. So we, with recording, it actually doesn't matter with the stream. So you guys on YouTube aren't actually going to care. You just can't ask questions. Yeah, you can't ask questions. But at, least, to what we're but at least you get to see everything, unlike the streamers. So I expect we'll get a lot more viewership on, this, on the YouTube anyway. All right. So, Siege. Big old picture with the greatest siege weapon ever made. The, the, only the only reason I backed this was because they didn't in include a filthy uh, catapult. Because catapults are garbage. And the trebuchet is a superior siege weapon. Alright. Uh, I think what I'm going to do with all of these uh, is... I'm going to get them organized onto their little tiny trays, blue tacked onto them, and then get those into little Plano boxes. And then I'll actually like label the sides of the Plano boxes with everything. And then if I need to pull out individual figures sure. for D&D for &D or something, then I can. Um, but that's probably how I'm going to organize them. They won't even be in these boxes. I'm not going to get rid of the boxes because I don't get rid of anything. All right. Oh. All right, look well, good. This is in the shot. So we have long castle walls, and they look very plain, right? Except on the back side, they've even got the little like sheds off the side. On the top, they it's wood, and there's little trap doors. <laughs> there's four of these that are each six inches. Yeah, that's six inches a piece. And you can double up on the size of that. Then you've got two gatehouses. Oh, the stuff is stuck in them. The stuff is actually Self stuck in the box. Tight. Yeah. All right. So these watchtower, these guard towers up top, are just the right size for putting these up in them. Um, you can put up cannons up there, you can put trebuchets, um, you can put troops up there, and then you can put troops along the back walls and stuff. And I've seen people, the, the, that's the other thing, is that I've seen people taking 
because they glued in their archers onto the tray. When they put them on the roof, they're, the little round piece is sticking off the back, whereas if you don't glue it, you can just have the archers standing on the back right. without needing to worry about that. So one side has um, a, yeah, so I think this is supposed to be the interior because it's got the door and it's got the little um, windows and stuff like that, which you would not want. No, never mind. Oh, I'm just that dumb. Yeah. So because of, that's where the crenellations yeah. are. But you've got... And then, and then, then that makes the porcelain the uh, reinforce the, the yeah. wood from behind. Yeah. So there's two gatehouses. Oh. And then... Oh, by the way. And then we've got six towers. With, with uh, guardhouses. Yeah, little guardhouses sticking out. And then um, with that... I'll show you how the... I watched the whole... Okay, it's not in that. We'll get to that. All right. So, the short walls actually have a curve to them. And that is... So, when you put them up against the tower, you can set them up like that. So, when you because these are flat on these big ones, you're meant to take a short piece and a long piece. And, and show it's inside that, that cross piece. So, you've got... You can have soldiers inside the house inside. and up here you can see you've got a hack yeah there's yeah there's a little yeah. door on the side here why is there no door on the tower well you need the yeah piece to do that. because you need the piece to do that yeah um and then they've got the full um can't remember, what's the word for that the little constructions that the temporary constructions they would set up on the roof i can't remember yeah. think of the name for it this is oh yeah. So these are ruined pieces of the castle. So which they've historically done with the ballast inside of yeah. the of the actual walls. Yeah, there's full ballast. So what you can do is when a piece of the wall collapses, you replace that piece with one of with this here to mm -hmm. show that that's a, that's a ruined part, and then yeah. you can have people come through. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's all very, very detailed, which is nice. So we've got a bunch of, how many? We have four long pe wall pieces. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve short wall pieces. Because two off of each tower. Yep, two off of each tower. And I've seen a full castle setup. You can do a castle that is entirely surrounded, surrounding a keep with room for like other buildings and stuff like that. Um, I did see somebody who had at least I, I know he had at least two siege sets because of how big it was but he did a massive <laughs> he did a whole city a walled city yeah and it was amazing so that may be something else i end up backing with though i may end up getting a second siege set this or that those. let's do this um so we have all the siege stuff there's mm -hmm. this is the trebuchet it has two little spots for you to put guys and then also <laughs> you can have it prepped to fire and then you can have it fire cool and it's got the little... Um, I'm sure it's built in the scenario for timing. Probably, yeah. But you have to like, you probably have to like load oh, it and then fire it. Yeah. And then we've got yeah. a battering ram. A ram. It's actually got a ram head. Grom. And then it's got uh, the... It moves. It does it? No. I don't, no, it doesn't. It's just tilt. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like it moves, which is cool. Uh, and then it's got shields on the outside mm -hmm. there. Uh, a bunch more troops, including like, sappers and stuff like that. So you can actually have people show up and undermine the walls. Also, if you've got a moat around a castle, the sappers can go in and they can lay down um, like uh, wood and stuff like that to fill in the moat. Yeah, so they have these yep. big, huge uh, walls, shields yeah. to be able to protect the crossbowmen as you slowly move towards. And the crossbowmen are down there to defend the rams and the yeah. assaulters. Yep. And then you've Water. got... A mortar, which is a big, thick one. But again, these ones are all built to go cool. right up in there. So you have your troops peeking out over the top. Yeah. Um, I was wrong. The trebuchets don't actually fit up there. But the trebuchets wouldn't go up on there anyway. They'd go back terrible. behind. They would go back behind the wall and shoot over the top of the wall. There's more yeah, of these. More just a single one in the, yeah. in the base. So that is the... Okay, then here we have the keep, which goes at the center of the fortification, 
and there is a there's a door down here, and then there is the stairway with the door up here, and then there's space up top for troops, and another space up here. Now, one thing that's really cool too is they have these little guys that go on the top. Uh, it doesn't go on the top of that, but it goes on oh, yeah. the tops of all the towers so they can be covered as well. And, thrown and set on fire. Yes. So then... Well, what's this? We have the siege tower. Siege tower. And now it doesn't go up, but... Uh, I'm sure people will be making modifications to it to raise and lower it. I myself um, know of somewhere that sells 3D files of Siege Tower, so I'll be printing some cool. off at half size so I can have more of these guys. Because like once you have the rules for something, mm -hmm. you can always add more to it. Do you remember how this went in there? Like that? Mm, no. Put your put it down there. Put that down there. That down there. there yeah. And this goes in here somehow. Yeah. Oh, and then we got uh, more cards. More cards. The Siege game actually has a whole um, game system where you actually, before the Siege starts, you get everything set up and then you play a short little card game mm -hmm. that allows you to, like, damage walls and stuff okay. and it represents the the months before a siege actually like the actual battle of a siege yeah. starts it's you just basically yeah. trying to starve the people out so um so it's cool because like you can have you can have the perfect setup and then the other person who's besieging you just drags it out so long that all your people inside starve and then they but at you, the same time you can drag it out so long that his own people run away because they haven't been paid yeah exactly and you can have it so that they uh the sappers can end up like taking down part of the wall before it starts, so that then once this and I believe once the piece, that piece of the wall falls, any piece of the wall falls, that's when the scenario has to start, because hmm. then you're not going to be like waiting sure. around while a wall is gone. So, um, so that'll be the rules. Oh, and then there's more uh, palisades as well. So I've seen some people when they're building their castles, they have the palisades like surrounding the outside, mm -hmm. um, like to be a more like a gatehouse. Is that everything in that? That's everything. All right. Well, so there's the books. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there is the books in here, the scenario books. That has, and this one is thicker than all the others because it has to introduce all the rules for the siege card game and everything. And then the nice thing, too, is it has some cool courtyard. They're falling out. So it has some courtyard um, pieces, and then also oh, the gate, the 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 runway, the walkway up. Yeah, but then this this ruined stuff here is meant for you to put. That's where you put the castle on top of. Mm -hmm. So once it does become ruined and you put up those ruins, then it you can see that it's been crumbled away, which is pretty cool. Uh, oh, they they in case you didn't buy the the village set, they do have wooden bridges for the moat. For the moat and then also they do have uh these ladder tokens which i'm just going to be 3d printing up some ladders so that it looks a lot better um oh and there wow. we have the inside including inside of the towers uh -huh. and inside the keep which i do like that the inside unless are there multiple floors for the keep if the keep is fairly empty which is actually only take you like a week to start somebody out yeah but the keeps were generally yeah. fairly empty yeah. because an you went to them in order to protect yourself mm -hmm. from being besieged. So that is the siege set. So as much as I would love to like make the very first game we play a massive siege, like we really shouldn't. We should probably learn the rules first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll play some of like the introductory scenarios yeah. and then get into the point where we're running a ma huge massive yeah. siege and everything. And it's going to take you a while to 3D print some of the really large castles. Yeah, what would be great is if I could actually like accurately like mm -hmm. be like, oh, this specific castle here, especially the off-center off ones too. Yeah, where the where you've got. Well, then you need the, hit like the ones the that are built up on the yeah. mountains. Then I'm going to need to build a whole mountain. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's going to have to happen. Oh shucks. So that that is 
the Joan of Arc yeah. unboxing. That's everything I got. There's a bunch more boxes. There's um, there's a the dragon more that we that yeah. you didn't back. There was the apocalypse. The apocalypse, which had some really really cool like apocalypse to me. Yeah. Um, like very the, uh, very very uh, uh, literal accuracy. Yeah, so like the like death is riding on a horse that's like laying upside down with its feet in the air. It's mm -hmm. actually based on a sculpture in, um, in Italy, I think. No, it's like it's Danish, I think. Okay. Um, and so basically, the horse is dead because he's death. So he's right, he's floating through the air with this horse with its legs up in the air, yeah. and it's everything like that. So they're all um, the horsemen of the apocalypse are in there. Um, the Antichrist is in there. Um, the the Ark the of the Lamb. Covenant is in there. Uh, the lamb and judgment. Judgment looks like like Jesus, like carrying a sword and everything. Yeah. So it's all very, very accurate to art. And every they said that every single piece that they have that's mythological, they have artwork mm -hmm. from that time period that shows that image essentially. Yeah. So, so that's everything. And now we just gotta now I just gotta sort through everything so we can Play start on. playing. Yeah. yeah. So thanks for watching, and we are going to uh, get out of here.